Nowadays, it seems like most artists are not down with giving up their name, likeness, copyrights, house, dog, cat, birthing rights, or dryer to sign with a major label, so they decide to go the independent route, which sounds pretty nice, or does it? If you haven't seen the video about major labels yet, go ahead and check out that because you will need some of that information. Otherwise, let's get to it. Independent record labels started popping up around the post-World War II era, the most notable being Sun Records, which was started in 1952 by Sam Phillips in Memphis, Tennessee, which you can still visit today. This label included icons like Johnny Cash, Elvis Presley, Roy Orbison, and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, that cousin-loving weirdo. But despite the notoriety of Sun Records, the most widely successful independent label in history is believed to be a and with a 37-year business and a large lineup of bands old and new. By the way, if you're wondering what the most successful independent album of all time was, it was an album called Smash by The Offspring released in 1994, which sold over 12 million copies worldwide. So remember, you don't have to be the next fusion jazz harmonica player to be an indie success. You just have to have honest music. But let's talk about the different types of independent labels there are out there. We're going to be discussing two different types, and the first one is what a lot of people know as true independents. And these ones go through independent distributors instead of going through the major labels. And this is essentially the purest form of independent you can get without running the whole damn thing yourself. The upside with these guys is that you will control a lot more of your own destiny when you sign with them, and they will probably have a little more faith in you as an artist. The downside is they don't have as big of a budget and they don't have as many connections as the majors, so things like your budget and your merchandise and honestly probably even your royalties are just not going to be as large. The second type of independent label is a major distributed independent label, and these guys essentially license out all the works you need except for recording the actual record to the major that they're owned by. The biggest downside with these guys is that they're essentially just a middleman between you and the major record label. So the major collects the money, it has to pass through the independent, which takes a little chunk, and then it gives the rest of the money to you. So you might have been better off just signing with the major label in the first place. Now here's the massive upside to consider with these guys. If your independent is still doing a lot of your services for you, but then you blow up beyond the point that they can meet the requirements, they can still license out those services to the major and they can meet the new demand for you. This is called upstreaming and the timing of this is extremely important for you as an artist. Now the type of record deal you're going to have really doesn't change that much. Remember that at this point in time, all record labels, both major and independent, use the 360 deal. And the reason they started using this was because they were borrowing against the artists that they signed, and so they had to take a little more money because they couldn't keep up with the payments, and by the way, it still isn't working. Now with an independent record label, you're more likely to keep more of the profits. In fact, some labels will let you keep up to 50% of what they earn. But again, the downside with this is that the reason they're letting you keep it is because they don't have as much pull as the big guys on the top floor. And now, some frequently asked questions. One of the biggest questions out there is how the independent label operates differently from the major label. The independent label has a much smaller staff of about 20 to 30 people, and you can contact all of them with relative ease. The best example I can think of is Jason Isbell's label 30 Tigers, which I'll post a link below here so you can check it out. And that's okay, but again, you got to remember that the independent has time, whereas the major has clout and money. The next biggest question is typically the difference between the major and the independent when it comes to the terms of the actual deal. The two biggest I can think of is that your royalty computations, again, are going to look different. And the second thing is that you're going to be able to keep a lot of your own destiny. So the record contract that you're going to get will look like a standard record contract, but a lot of the provisions that kind of screw artists over in terms of money are taken out. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't get a lawyer to look over all these papers. You definitely should, and that should be your standard every single time you sign with anybody. What I'd like to make really clear is that despite the fact that you get to keep your masters, they will still have a small provision inside your record contract that says, just like the major record label, if you decide to leave the label, you cannot recreate your songs for quite some time, and that's typically around a couple years, so just be careful. A lot of people who don't know a lot about independent labels are always wondering why so many musicians favor independent labels, and to me there's three big reasons. The first one is obviously more creative control. You get to keep your masters, you get to keep a lot of your own destiny, and there's not as much leverage against you. The second reason is that independent labels can typically sign on and work with whoever they want to. So that means if they sign you on, they're genuinely interested in what you're doing, and on top of that, they set more realistic goals for people who are not looking to be the next Bruno Mars but still want to make a living playing their music. And the third reason is that you will have a closer relationship with your staff, and therefore, the relationships will be more meaningful. And speaking of realistic goals, of course, I had to give you three big downsides. I don't want to do it, but I want to be honest to you, so we got to talk about them. The first one is money. The independent labels just don't have as much money as the majors, and so obviously that is a huge factor. The second one is less networking capabilities. The major labels have tons of ins and ties to the music industry folks and all the movers and shakers, while the independent label, depending on their size, may not have any. 
And the third is the scalability factor. If you were to blow up overnight, if you had a true independent label that didn't have any connection to a major label, they just might not be able to meet your demand. And the last question and the biggest one to me is knowing all that you know now, do you go major or independent? Last year, the total income of all independent record labels for digital sales topped at least one of the major record labels. Now, while the majors are still making the bulk of the money, independents are rising fast and every single year. So there's still hope out there and it's looking really great. Now, whichever way your music career goes, I have four big pieces of advice for you. The first one is don't think that you will just write songs and record. There is no possible way you will get where you want to go if you just do that. There are tons of other variables, so be prepared to do extra work in those extra fields. The second thing, if you're not selling M&M size numbers, don't feel like you failed somehow. This is one of those businesses where people make the mistake of thinking that success is defined by the top tier of success, and that's not true. Make the process your goal. The third thing, never think you can do this alone and never think that you're the only one that can do it like you can do it. There are a lot of people out there who are very talented, and if you're smart enough to realize the areas that you need help, I promise your business will actually go further than if you tried to do anything on your own. And the fourth thing, patience is key, especially if you're going the independent route. Keep your head down, just keep your head in the game, keep working on everything, and I promise you'll do great. On the bright side of the music industry, more and more folks are building businesses on their own, and according to new research, it's going pretty well. So artists like Jason Isbell and Chance the Rapper are showing us slowly that if you have the talent and audiences can't get enough of you, you don't need no stinking label. Hey, did you like that last video? If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down there. Make sure you hit the notification bell along with it to get all the updates. And I'll also let the little elves and robots at YouTube know that more people want to see content, which would be, uh, which would be pretty great.